it all do For richer or poorer Till death has to part And you said that till honour And obey me too But it wasn't very long before I said But in sickness and in health I love you In sickness and in health I said I'll do Right, I'm finished, come and have a look Yeah, don't say don't do nothing for you Next time it's their turn to scrub this, them upstairs Hey, can you hear? <laughs> <laughs> Next time it's your turn to scrub this well, they say that this bit of passage belongs to us. From the front door to the stairs, they say, is ours. So it's our business to keep it clean. All right, then. If that is what they say, if this bit is ours, they can't walk over it no more. <laughs> they can't come in out this way. <laughs> hey! All right! Hey! <laughs> if that's your bloody game up there, if this bit is ours, from the stairs, to the front door, you can't use it no more, all right? You can't come in and out this way. You want to get out, you've got a bloody ladder and climb out the window. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> sauce. And don't walk over that until I've got some paper down. Where's the mats? Out the back. I'm going to give them a good banging in a minute, get the dust out of them. Well, don't do it yet. Next door's got her washing hanging out. Well, she can take it in, can't she? I ain't hanging about waiting for her washing to dry. Anyway, I'm going to light a bonfire out the back in a minute, burn up some rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. I'll soon find some. Well, can't you wait till she takes her washing in? She'll soon take it in when I light the fire, don't you worry. <laughs> Look, that is my garden out the back, isn't it? I pay rates for that bit of land, and if I want to light a fire or bang me mats out, it's my property I'm doing it on. Well, it'd be more neighbourly to wait. Ah, you let them walk all over you, that's your trouble. I'm gonna light a fire out here in a minute, all right? <laughs> Bring your mats out, all right? You've been warned. Don't say you ain't been warned. <laughs> get off of me! Get off of me! Get off of me! Where'd I get that bleating dog from? <laughs> Who's that? That'd be the milkman. Ah, oh, where's he been? Number four again, I suppose. This morning tea gets over there, I can tell you. <laughs> morning. Mind where you're walking, I just scrubbed all that. Oh, blimey. <laughs> You look knackered, you do. Do you know that that is the equivalent of a 20-mile run, that is? What is? What you was doing over there. Well, it's harder than pushing a wheelchair, especially after you've climbed a block of flats. Never mind. You won't have to do anything like that anymore, will you? <laughs> Ain't you lucky? Smart ass. <laughs> hey, you want to set up, Mrs G? Oh, please, George. Right up. Let's see now. Here we are. <sighs> now, on Monday, you had two pints, right? And 20p each way on Crown Prince. Yeah. Now that went down, didn't it? <laughs> then on Tuesday, you had one pint, half a pound of butter, and 20p on Ambrosia, and that came in at seven to four on. Yeah. Then on Wednesday, you had two pints, a quarter pound of tea, and 50p Irish Lady, and that went down. It fell down. <laughs> on Thursday, you had one pint, a dozen eggs, a quarter pound of cheese, and 20p to win on Lucky Charlie, which was scratched. Yeah. You like them non runners, don't you? <laughs> then on Friday you had two pints and, that's right, I collected something from the dry cleaners for you and paid for it. Now, what was it? Oh, I know, it was uh, something of his, wasn't it? Yeah. They said they couldn't get the stains out. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they wanted to know what they were. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then you had ten people win on Midnight Express. Yeah, that was a good one, coming at 100 to 8. Yeah. So let me see, add that, take that, yeah, and that leaves... Yes, well, that's right. I owe you two eggs. Oh. <laughs> All this gambling, I don't know. That, that supplementary benefit, that's not supposed to be used for gambling. It's supposed to be spent on things we need. We need eggs. I won eggs. You don't always win, do you? Well, I mostly do. Yeah, they all say that. Well, fun. I need a bit of fun. Stuck in a wheelchair. It's the only bit of fun I get. Yeah, I like to know how much of that welfare finishes up in a betting office. You would. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody has to pay that money in, don't they, before it gets paid out? Well, we all know that, Mr Garnet, as it so happens. I am one of them what's paying it in. 
Oh, I'm not complaining. Well, I wouldn't expect you to. It was your Labour lot started all that, wasn't it? All them free handouts. Well, you should think yourself lucky they did. I mean, they cost a lot of money, them wheelchairs. That's what I'm forever telling him. I don't know where we'd be today if it weren't for the welfare. It's a blessing, I think. Oh, yeah, it's a blessing, all right. Blessing for the bloody bookmakers, innit? The way some of them spend their welfare in there. All right, we was lucky. I admit that. We got a wheelchair out of it, but if she hadn't been struck down and crippled up the way she is, we could have gone on paying him for years and got nothing out of it. You call that lucky? No, oh, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> you take you take your Liverpool, right? Now, they're supposed to be so poor up there, right, with all the unemployed. But if they're so poor, how is it they can afford two of the most expensive football teams in England, eh? If they're so bloody <laughs> poor, how is it they can afford all them star players, eh? Simple. It's obvious. It's your welfare. It's your welfare was paying, isn't it? <laughs> your welfare's paying yes. the players' wages. Now, how do you make that out? Oh, I'll explain it to you. Listen, see, a lot of them, when they get their welfare, right, they're straight in the betting shop with oh, it. Boom. Leave but it out. Leave never it Never mind leave it out. Leave it in. You bloody listen. You might learn something. <laughs> <laughs> but there's hell of a lot more of that money going through the turnstiles of football, isn't it? Hey. I mean, up there in your Liverpool, they're playing European matches. Uh, they used to. All right, used to. <laughs> they're still playing cup and league. They're playing three times a week, both teams. Where's the money coming from? That's what I want to know. What about the Never football Never mind pools? about the bloody pools, mate. The bloody grounds are packed to the rafters, both of them, aren't they? We're all out of work up there. Nobody's working. They're all old towns on the bleating dole. Where's the money coming from? Let's go in through the turnstile. It's your welfare, isn't it? Your Everton and your Liverpool is being subsidised out of your DHSS. <laughs> so we ain't so bloody lucky, are we? We might have got a wheelchair out of it, but we could have done with a bit more money for our football. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, it's right what you said about your Europe. I mean, it's not fair, is it? Just because of the ignorance of a handful of... Liverpool hooligans. West Ham's dreams of European glory has been dashed. <laughs> Not bloody fair years West Ham's been preparing for Europe. Bloody years. <laughs> Wasted years now, aren't they? Hey. And just because of a few rotten, lousy scar skits, <laughs> dusting their duty free, and they won't pay their rates, will they, right? The rest of us, oh dear me, no. What are you talking about, spoiling West Ham's chances? You've got to win something here before you can get into Europe. We can win, we can win, but there's ways of winning, in there? And we wouldn't stoop so low as some of your clubs do. <laughs> That's our trouble. Oh, blimey. Don't suppose I'll live long enough to see West Ham win that European Cup? Your grandchildren won't live long enough. Shut up. <laughs> oh, well, I've got to be off because uh, I've got to settle up with that young unmarried mother in number 26. Uh, what's all the spring cleaning for? You uh, expecting visitors? We've got another hour of milk coming, haven't we? So we have to get up six o'clock in the morning and tidy up the place for her. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to think we live in a pigsty. Right. Fifth one, this is social workers. So they want to be social, all right. They want to be too bloody social. All they want to do is sit here drinking tea and jewelry. None of them wants to do any work, it seems. Bloody football hooligans. <laughs> you ought to brand them, that's what you ought to do. <laughs> brand them across the forehead. <laughs> brand them for life. So we can see them, so we can we can see who they are. Football hooligans! <laughs> Murders! <laughs> rapists! Brand them! Brand them all! Unemployed! Unemployable! <laughs> and when we see them, we can whack them and kick them and <laughs> them. Bloody castrate them! Yes, sir. Well, have a nice day, Mrs G. you to have done. We've already done it ourselves, haven't we? <laughs> you was late. You're supposed to be here at nine o'clock. I left home at nine o'clock. My day starts when I leave home. Oh, does it? Well, as far as I am concerned, your day starts when you get here. Anyway, don't let's have arguments. You make a start on the bedroom. I've tied it in here. I've got some shirts in here, want washing out, and a pair of underpants. <laughs> I would like to point out to you, Mr Garnet. I am not supposed to do any work or clean any rooms used by active relatives. 
solely used. I've got your book here, Mrs. <laughs> it says solely used. I don't use that bedroom solely. She shares my bed with me. Poor woman. Never mind about poor woman. <laughs> You're tidy both halves of the room. You can clear your own mess and wash your own underpants. Not just my mess, it's both our mess. I'll do anything Mrs Garnet wants, but I'll not be your dog's boss. You'll do your job, that's what you'll do. I've got your book here, Missy. Don't you pull no stunts on me. <laughs> I know my rights. And I know my rights. Right, right, we'll see. Here we are. The type of work which your home help can be expected to do is those tasks which you can perform due to handicap illness or infirmity. You're not handicapped, are you? No, but my wife is, and the kind of task which she cannot perform is looking after me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning my house. Cooking and washing and scrubbing and performing those duties that a wife performs for her husband. That's your job. That's what the council sent you around here to do, not to sit around drinking tea. And for a start off, I ain't had no breakfast yet. Haven't you had any breakfast yet, Mrs Garner? No, she hasn't had any breakfast yet! <laughs> because the city has been too bloody busy cleaning and tidying the place for you! So she ain't had no time to cook me no breakfast. I told her to leave it for you. I told you you don't have a dog and bark yourself. Would you like me to make you some breakfast, Mrs Garner? Yes, we would! Of course we bloody would! We've been sitting here two hours waiting for you to cook us out. And don't think you're getting away with that two hours, neither, because I've got that note down. I'll have that deducted from your bloody wages. You can't come round here skiving, Mrs. Oh, blimey. We're not soft in the head, you know, like some of them you look after. And another thing, for your information, we know what we've got and what we ain't got. What do you mean by that? We've had home helps before, Mrs, and we've had things go walkies. Are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating nothing, I'm just putting you straight. That's right, and while we're on the question of security, I'd like to see your identity card, please, to verify that you are a bona fide council employee. I'm sorry, Mrs Garnet. I can't stay here. Yeah. Not with him. I couldn't bear to be in the same room as him. Catches him up. I don't know how you manage it. You have my sympathy. I will not put up with talk like this. I have never been talked to in that manner before. Oh, yes. And in my work, I've come across some of the lowest and most common of people. Yeah. Or so I thought until today. I'm afraid you'll have to get back to the council. See if they can find you somebody else. Somebody not so particular. Don't spit on my head! <laughs> Jay, I'm sorry. You poor woman.
smoke that thing in here, are you? What's it got to do with you? <laughs> smoke it where I like, won't I? My ass? Well, I'm not staying in the same room with that thing. It's a filthy, dirty habit. Get off. You'll poison me. Get off. <laughs> the pipe the back is all right. It's healthy enough. It's dangerous. <laughs> dangerous, pardon me. You smoke one of these, missus, you'll come to no harm. It's dangerous to be in the same room with somebody smoking that poisonous stuff. Get off, dangerous. Even if it was dangerous, wouldn't stop me from smoking. Because I am smoking for the health and prosperity of the country. For what? <laughs> Let me ask a question. Where does the nation derive its biggest income from, eh? From your tobacco tax, isn't it? So if the whole nation stops smoking tomorrow, all that money's down the drain, it. Almost come under your sabotage act, that, that would, wouldn't it? Ruining the economy of the country. No, missus, what I'm doing is patriotic. It's patriotic to smoke. Rubbish. Not rubbish. Not rubbish at all, my dear. Do you know how much money was collected last year from your tobacco tax? Enough to pay for your National <laughs> Health Service and a bit over as well. She wouldn't have no wheelchair if it wasn't for people like me smoking, and you wouldn't have no job neither. <laughs> Boy, for us smokers, blind ass smokers, oh, we ought to get a medal what we're doing for the country. And people like you who give up smoking for health reasons are too frightened to smoke, you ought to be given a white feather. <laughs> hey? Never mind about A. Hey, look, if a war breaks out tomorrow, if you are called to the colours, you can't refuse to go and fight because it's dangerous, can you? Same with your, same with your smoking, same with tobacco. Don't give up smoking because it's dangerous. Not if it's for the benefit of the country. No. I am smoking for England and the Queen. God bless her. <laughs> and I refuse to work in a room filled with foul smoke. Get off! And it's bloody marvellous! I am persecuted for smoking my own pipe in my own home, in my own country! Persecuted for smoking your pipe, I am! What is it? Bloody Russia! Give us that here. Marvellous, isn't it? Persecuted! Persecuted! I'm treated worse than a bloody black iron! Get off! <laughs> Can't smoke in a train, can't smoke in a tube train, can't smoke on a platform, can't even smoke in the street without somebody poking their nose in and casting their persons with their bloody posters and waving their arms about and saying, filthy habit, filthy habit. <laughs> what a train, bloody British railways train, our own bloody railways paid for it of our own bloody taxes with fares, it's a bloody crime. I'm sitting in a smoker, smoking compartment, where smoking is allowed, where you're supposed to smoke, and a bloody crowd of Asians gets in, bloody packies, bloody nicknots. <laughs> Not even born in this country, they stink in a bloody curry, they are. And just because I like to pipe me, an Englishman in his own country, country he was born in, well, they don't wear a black helmet because they want to wear a bloody turban. And, and I'm sitting in my own bloody railway train, and just because I like up my pipe, they'll start waving their hands about. And, and, and like bloody whirling dervishes and opening the windows, they do. I'll open a window. No, you won't, I my ass. Get out of here. No, you fully attacking old people. This is my ass. It's gone to us. <laughs> this, this is me, missus. This is where I live. This is mine. This, this is, this part of the empire is still mine. This bit is still free. Here I do what I want. Here I smoke my pipe in peace and no arm waving and opening bloody windows. <laughs> These are my love. I can bloody see them wobbling away there, missus. <laughs> These are my I see them. And I don't want them bunged up within your foul smoke. I want to breathe pure. Oh, pure off them, bloody well, breathe somewhere else. <laughs> Take your bloody lungs, all four and a half tons of them outside and breathe somewhere else. We don't have bloody lungs in here. They're not staying here, don't you worry. <laughs> People like you should be locked up. I fought a war against people like you. <laughs> Are you going round the doctors for me? I keep asking you. 
I want you to collect my prescription. Yes, I'm going. When? In a minute. <laughs> It'll be too late in a minute. I'm going. Well, go then. In a minute. <laughs> in a minute. In a minute's all you say. In a minute. Ask for a glass of water. In a minute. In a minute. Ask for a cup of tea. It's in a minute. In a minute. Anything I ask you to do, it's in a minute. You say that once more, in a minute. And I'll throw something at you. You stop nagging. Going for your prescription, I... Going for it. I said I would, and I will. When? <laughs> <laughs> now. Now, then. In a minute! back. Take your time, you won't be missed. <coughs> I've got a new home help coming today and I don't want you here, so stay away. Stay away till she's done her work and gone. Life's not fair when somebody who wants to be active, who prefers to be active, loses the use of their legs, while others who wouldn't miss the use of their legs. <laughs> prefer not to use them anyway. <laughs> They'd be quite content to sit about all day doing nothing but allowed to go through life with legs that are wasted on them. <laughs> You're moving at last. <laughs> You're wicked, you are. Ooh, ooh. I only hope he can hear you. My legs could be on the way to being as bad as yours are. They ain't escaped. Not yet, they ain't. This leg started playing up the same way yours started. Well, perhaps we'll both end up in a wheelchair made for two. No, it's true. I've seen it on the telly. Get off. I did. I've seen it on the telly. Mm. Listen, they put your woman's hormones in your balls here. <laughs> women's hormones. hormones. Women's hormones. Women's hormones. Get off. I think they put them down his ear. How? How to put hormones in his ear? With a syringe. What, in his hormones? Hormones. Women's hormones. Women's hormones. Get off. Well, it makes your ball fatter. Well, hormones. Yes, does. hormones. Well, it blows him up like so they get more meat off it. See? Well, hormones. Hormones, yes. <laughs> Women's <laughs> hormones, yes. <laughs> well, uh, here's the danger. Mm. If you get a bit of his ear, or a bit what's been close to his ear. Well, like his head, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> turn you into a pufter. <laughs> You don't, you don't eat his head, don't eat your bull's head. You do eat your bull's head. Not his head. You eat his head when you're eating your mince. Get off now. And your hamburgers. Now. You do, look, what you're eating when you're eating your mince, your mince meat and your hamburgers is your bull's head. What? And it can turn you into a pufter. <laughs> What do you mean, the hormones? Your wom wom woman's hormones? That's no, your hormones, your woman's hormones. Yeah. Why do you think we've got so many bloody pufters springing up like mushrooms all around the place? <laughs> Spreading your AIDS and your herpes. <laughs> I don't believe all that cobbler. It's true. Yeah, no. I've seen it on the telly. You want to don't believe no, everything. Listen, there, there should be a warning. Yeah. A government warning. Mm. This hamburger could turn you into a pufter. <laughs> Yeah, not not if you're a woman. Yeah, well, could have the reverse effect. What do you what do you mean? You, like a, le a lesbian? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> see, it's the same thing. What? Why are there so many lesbians? You see, it's the same as your fellas, yeah. only different. 
<laughs> Where they enjoy it, like how they do it, well, it's unnatural, isn't it? No. I mean, consulting adults is all right up to a point. Well, right, listen, I, I mean, yes. Ah, but you've got to do a lot. I mean, you don't mind a few of the names. Oh, boys. no. 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 <laughs> have a laugh, have a what? giggle. Mm. Here, it's half. I heard they've got them in the houses of Parliament now. No. You're Nancy boys, do yeah. you? You don't want them in the Parliament, you? Do don't you? want them in your Parliament, no. no. Draw your line somewhere, you? You don't want a brown hatter in number ten. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not with his living boyfriend, eh? <laughs> Good elf, Arthur. Good elf, elf. Blimey, you can't say that when you're pissed, can you? <laughs> Good elf, elf. I've got news for you, I am pissed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I hope they ain't put no... <laughs> no women's hormones in this, mate. <laughs> well, if they have, I'm following you home, sailor. <laughs> What time do you call this coming home? I suppose you want your dinner now. <laughs> well, I've got news for you. We've already had ours. But you're very lucky. I've saved you some. <coughs> Sit, Buana. <laughs> I just cleaned that. <laughs> Them is all the same, you know, dear. Men 